Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today we will be taking a look at RAM performance on the 5800X 3D with two vastly different RAM kits. This right here is a very fancy BDI kit running CL17 at DDR4 4000 in 2x16 configuration which is dual channel. And then the kit we're going to be comparing it against is going to be an entry level 16 gig kit running 3000 MHz CL16. The reason I decided to go for this comparison isn't because this is an apples to apples comparison. I want to compare what nearly, let's say, six times the money gets you in terms of performance on the 5800X3D. Now, I know I'm exaggerating, it's more like five times the money, realistically speaking, because this is 1200 lei, which is the equivalent to uh, $260. Meanwhile, you know, this one's 280 lei, which is the equivalent, let's see, 200. Uh, sorry, which is the equivalent $60. So can you save $200, not get the fancy BDI kit, and just get this and still have very good performance on a 5800X3D? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. I wanted to mention that my uh, BDI kit is running at 3800 because the Infinity Fabric struggles to maintain 4000, and while I've tried to tune it, I decided it's not worth risking per, uh, performance regression and just sticking to 3800 and tuning the timings aggressively. And that's exactly what I did. And as you can see, my timings right here are 14, 14, 14, 26, 54, running at 1T with gear down mode enabled. And for the um, this memory kit in the background, I'll just run it at straight up XMP and we'll see how it performs using the Warzone 2 benchmark, which I found to be quite a good representation of memory scaling within Warzone as I'm still bottlenecked on the 4090 while using a 5800X 3D. Let's get things started with the Warzone 2 benchmark on the very fast BDI kit. Just so you guys know, I am running a dual PC setup right now. It's a bit rough around the edges as I'm not able to record the audio from the main gaming PC and uh, I'm also struggling with OBS severely so I'm using the Elgato game capture to capture the footage. But I'll get there and hopefully I can also perfect the mic settings as indeed this is a new microphone that I'm using. Alright guys, these are the results of the DDR4 3800CL14 kit. I ran this three times just to make sure it's accurate and indeed the FPS was always within margin of error, no problem, so it was very accurate. Now, here's the interesting thing. These results are not bad, they're actually very good. But what will be very interesting is when you see the DDR4 3000 results as this looks great but this is not much different as you can tell yes i also ran this three times just to make sure and truthfully it is a difference as you can see the one percent lows are indeed lower the low fifth percent is indeed lower and the average fps is indeed lower across the board but it's by a very minute amount and given you pay 200 plus dollars and you also must tune your RAM, otherwise it's even smaller of a difference. I don't know how much worth there is in doing something like that for the 5800X 3D. Unironically, if you have DDR4 3000, you are 95% of the way there of getting the most performance out of your 5800X 3D. So, uh, coming from somebody that paid for both of these, I have to say I'm a bit ashamed of my financial decision, but uh, I'll stick with it. It is still theoretically faster, even though if it's like freaking 16 FPS or 15 FPS. But within Warzone, we'll see if it differs any more. Let's check it out. Right before we get into the BR section, I want to mention I'm running full screen borderless. These settings that you're seeing here are the competitive settings that I use in all my videos, and I use them because they are generally the best for performance. Now, this might not be in every single situation, but I've hand-tested these and it just has worked for me until now. Anyway, if you want to just pause the video to check them out, you can. Let's get BR started. Alright, we are here in Battle Royale doing our very first test with a 3000 kit. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run for a short period of time and we're gonna check out the FPS. So, momentarily, the frame rate average is significantly lower than before. Now, I haven't done testing with the 4000 and the 3800 yet, so I'll have to do that quickly. Now, I do have to say the 1% lows are far lower than I remember them to be in my previous testing and so is the average frame rate. So, yes, the 3000 kit does affect performance. By how much? Let's see. Alright, we are here with the faster RAM now in Battle Royale. So, let's check out the performance as we walk through here. As you can see, since the latest Call of Duty update, the FPS is just overall far lower. And it would, funnily enough, seem that... Uh, 
The fancier RAM does not make much of a difference at all. I mean, maybe it's a couple of frames faster, let's say like 5, 10, but uh, it's not something that you'd expect to be this insignificant given the price difference and the amount of time you have to spend tuning the RAM for it to perform better. As you saw in the like actual proper benchmark within Modern Warfare 2, it did make a difference, but it was still only like 16 FPS. So obviously within here, it would make quite a similar difference. With that said, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I did want to mention that I did just order a 7950X3D earlier today and I'll be doing a similar video on it where I do test RAM and its timings to see how it affects the performance of yet another 3D, uh, 3D chip. The first video I'll be posting with a 7950X3D though is a 20 game benchmark where I'll test 20 games with both CCDs on and 20 games with one CCD off, which is, you know, the higher frequency one, so I can have only the CCD that has Vcash. It's going to take me a while to do that one, so I'm just letting you guys know, because it is 20 games I'll be testing, but I want to keep doing this. I apologize for the awkward video, because uh, this is a new microphone. I'm, for the first time ever, recording dual PC, and uh, it was all very convoluted and complicated to set up, so bear with me while I learn but I'll learn quickly so I can keep posting videos for you guys to enjoy. With that said, I hope today's video was helpful and I hope I, uh, I, hope I saved you over $200 uh, on a purchase decision if you do have a 5800X3D. With that said, have a good one and peace.